Welcome to the Light and Energy Show with me, Claire Wiles. We're joined today by Richard D. Hall. Welcome, Richard, to the show. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, Claire. Uh, Richard is a UFO investigator and he has a TV show called Rich Planet Starship, of which I'm an avid watcher on a Sunday morning, I have to say. Um, it's lovely to have you here. Um, Richard, may I start by asking you, where did your interest in UFOs begin? Well, um, <coughs> I don't recall which radio show it was, but there was a radio show in the UK where there was a, a chap called Bob Lazar uh, uh -huh. interviewed. Now, anyone who's interested in ufology will know that name, and his testimony basically it, it cuts the UFO field in half like a knife through butter. Some people say he's an absolute fraud, other people say he's telling the truth, and basically he mm -hmm. claims that he worked on flying saucers that the US government had acquired from extraterrestrials and he came out with his story in 1989 and I got wind of that in the mid 90s and that was what hooked me into, u into ufology. Now you could debate all day the pros and cons of Lazar's story but that was the initial story that got me involved. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So have you had any personal experience of UFOs? No I haven't but no. I, I think that that helps me maintain an objective viewpoint on it. A look, yeah. at, look at other researchers work. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Great. How did you get into actually investigating other people's experiences? Well, um, I started giving uh, lectures in my hometown, uh, Newcastle, on, on the UFO subject because mm. I thought that uh, um, it's a very important subject for the whole of humanity and mm. I didn't think it was being represented correctly on mainstream television. Mm. So I started giving talks and I was contacted by a gentleman called Robert Hall and uh, who claims to have seen uh, and actually been abducted by an extraterrestrial uh, craft and was taken on board it, he alleges. Now I investigated his story and I made a, a, a film about it uh, entitled The Gateshead Grey, which mm -hmm. people who watch my show will be aware of. Yes, yeah. Uh, so that was, that was the first sort of uh, case that I looked into, wh mm. which had already been looked at by Gary Heseltine, mm. who's the police detective who also is a, a UFO investigator. Now, I, wouldn't, I don't consider myself to be a UFO investigator, although I have investigated t two or three cases. Mm. I like to consider myself, I look at other researchers' work who mm. investigate, people like um, David Caton, people like Phil Hoyle, um, Dave Hodrian, Timothy mm. Goods' cases, uh, Gary Heseltine. I, 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 I like to take an overview of the whole thing and try and pull threads together and mm basically almost from a philosophical viewpoint is just what's going on rather than just in you know there's a lot of people do a lot of hard work in ufology that goes unnoticed and mm. I'm very appreciative of all of the people involved mm. in the field because mm. I like to think that I would report on their work mm. on my show yes yeah yeah and bring it bring it all together so that people can yeah. get to hear about it that wouldn't do otherwise exactly I see myself more as a conduit to try and spread the information fairly mm. Because I don't believe it's treated fairly in the mainstream. No, That's no. how I see my role, rather than an investigator. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the Gateshead Grey. Sure. Well, um, Robert Hall was five years old in 1940. He claims he was watching some soldiers mark, uh, sorry, marching along a road in Gateshead. This was just at the beginning of World War uh, II. And he ran down a street and he came across this barrier and behind the barrier was this egg-shaped UFO. Now the way he describes the craft is so common, it, it's round to egg-shaped, uh, metallic, uh, glowing, which is what many people report and he also reports seeing small, large-eyed uh, creatures who then took him on board this craft. Now. Um, he claims that there are other witnesses to that event, that he was with another boy. Now, I've managed to trace that other boy, but he's unfortunately passed away. There was another witness that I managed to trace, but she wouldn't speak to me. She almost just closed the door on me, and I've written her letters, and she won't speak to me. So it's unfortunate that we've only got his testimony. Mm. So mm. in that respect, it's a weak case, I would say, but it's fascinating nonetheless, because mm. the guy's told the story all of his life, and he alleges that a few days after uh, the incident, uh, a grey approached him and his uncle actually killed this grey alien which was taken away by the government. Now, mm. uh, that sounds highly far-fetched, but this guy, he, he, he hasn't told any... Uh, well, basically, he's, he's told this story all of his life. So why would somebody do that? You know, it's... Um, it, and there are... Basically, every fact that I've managed to corroborate is true. Mm. You know what I mean? So. 
all the street names, the, the, the names of the people involved, etc. So, mm. and if anyone watch, wants to watch that film, they can mm. get it on my website, richplanet.net. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I, I saw that show, and he seemed extremely feasible mm -hmm. to me and, and what vested interest would a, would a chap like that have in making some a story like that up you'd have nothing to gain uh -huh. from that and if I remember rightly somebody from the military came to his house and told him not to speak about it to anybody yeah it, it, which, it, which what which is what he claims and um, mm. and a reporter came to his house as well which has mm. been corroborated by his sister mm. uh, you know but we do we need to get more solid evidence mm. but uh, that task is made difficult in my opinion because I believe that there is an act of cover-up at a very high level mm. to, s to prevent the mass populace finding out the truth of this subject. I believe that there is, it is absolutely true at its core but it's ridiculed in the mainstream and mm. it's played down in the mainstream mm. and that order in my opinion comes from a very high level. Mm. It's interesting isn't it in the, the papers there may be a UFO story that will hit the papers for a short space of time and then all of a sudden you hear nothing of it again. Mm. Yeah, a good example of that was the wind turbine incident in Lincolnshire mm. where people witnessed a UFO, this, the, the, the arm of the wind turbine came off, the other one was damaged mm. and then you don't hear anything about it, there's no follow up on it you, as you rightly point out. Yeah. Why do you think the governments um, do try to cover this up? Because clearly they do. Well, that's a, a very g that question goes a long way, it's a very deep question. I think the cover up was started in the 1940s. Uh, with President Truman, uh, that was uh, you know it's been documented in books by the likes of Timothy Good, mm. and at that time it was to do with um, keeping the technology that was recovered from Roswell away from the Russians and away from the public. They wanted time to be able to investigate the alleged aliens that were recovered in Roswell and the technology. Now that cover up uh, has just gone on and on and on, and in, in, in my opinion, it's uh, time now for, for for them to reveal the truth. I think there are other deeper reasons to do with abduction. I think that the uh, the abduction phenomenon is real, mm -hmm. and I think that that possibly is the real agenda behind the UFO phenomenon. And it's the purpose of, of, of what they're doing to these people that they abduct that I think could be the real reason for the UFO cover-up, that, that it's to do with a genetics program. Mm -hmm. Now that's highly controversial, and I, I, would, I would agree we need more evidence for it. Mm -hmm. But as I say, I'm trying to get geneticists on mm -hmm. board to to help prove that people who have been abducted and their children have had genetic mm. modification mm. right but you need a lot of money or you need help from geneticists yeah. to prove that yeah uh, so based on all of the anecdotal and uh, testimony that I've seen I think it's true I think mm. it's uh, but you but we need the physical evidence do you think that people like uh, the geneticists might find it controversial to come on board they might be Concerned about their their future, their um, their future role in in science. Definitely, I mean, one good example is uh, Lloyd Pye, who has a nine hundred year old uh, skull, which he contends is not its genetics is not one hundred percent from Earth, doesn't originate from Earth. He believes the father was an extraterrestrial, and all of the genetic tests that have been done on this skull so far back up that theory and I think he's very close to actually coming up with final proof of that. Now mm. he went to have to d jump through so many hoops and get funding from various sources to get these tests done so absolutely mm. it's, um, but I think if we can publicize it in a professional way yeah. and get people on board even to do it in their spare time you know not necessarily in their professional capacity mm. that's what I'm looking at. Mm. Because I mean, since time immemorial, there's evidence of aliens visiting this earth, isn't there? There's aliens in paintings. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there's so much when you look back through history mm -hmm. that it isn't a recent phenomenon. This has been going mm -hmm. on since time immemorial. Yeah, and I would s quote the Bible mm. as, as having, you know, you can interpret that uh, fire coming down from the sky, clouds coming down from the sky, clouds remaining fixed for six days, which shed light at night and shade during the day does that sound like a cloud people entering clouds and stepping out of clouds or th are they making that up or are they referring to something which actually happened mm. and uh, as you say you know there are many many references in history to i mean you know i'll say something controversial that that, that, that jesus christ that was possibly you know a, an abduction stroke insemination mm. incident you know yes. that will upset religious people a lot but i mean <laughs> 
possibly that's what that was. Yeah, and would I be right in saying that somewhere in St Paul's Cathedral there's actually evidence of, uh, of a spaceship or an alien? I, I hadn't heard that. Um, I know that uh, the Vatican mm -hmm. is, uh, there's uh, so many rumours about the Vatican, about how they've got uh, possible um, bones from ancient what we call Anunnaki or the Nephilim, mm. the giants which once walked the earth, and other technology in the in the Vatican. These are, these are, the, these are rumours, but again, uh, we do need more proof. Which is, uh, I'm trying to be objective on my show, and, and uh, although not be, I, I don't have a hardened skeptic attitude. I have an open-minded attitude, but a realistic attitude mm. to try and find more evidence. Mm. Yeah. Do you think crop circles fit into any of this? Ooh, I, I, I don't know what the what the the actual connection to crop circles is, but what I will say about crop circles is that some of them can't be explained by people with planks flattening the grass. <laughs> yeah. They can't all be explained in those terms, and I can I've got I can show you video evidence that that, that can prove that, mm. that 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 certain circles provably have not been made in that way. They've been made in another way. Mm. Uh, and, and there's n there's no real uh, easy explanation as to how they have been made. And I've the other the other point about crop circles is that there's been a massive, a lot of money pumped in by, in my opinion, research I've done by intelligence agencies to sponsor the crop circle makers. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that program is to keep people away from the real phenomenon, which the military are interested in. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's covered in one of my films mm -hmm. called Crop Circles: The Hidden Truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You often um, champion people who's as well who are suffering injustices mm -hmm. um, in some of your recent shows. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have covered uh, some, uh, one particular case, the Holly Gregg case, uh, the child abuse. Um, I mean, this comes from, obviously, the, the subjects that I cover, I get involved in truth groups mm -hmm. or the truth movement. There's a local truth group where I live in Newcastle called North East Truth, and they were all talking about Holly Gregg, you know, and they've said, well, they, they want people to, um, you know, certain media organisations were basically banned, possibly denoticed, from putting out her story. A panorama team were ordered to stop making the documentary about her story. So these people, tr truth seekers or members of North East Truth, they were incensed that this girl's story was not being allowed in the media. And I said, well, I'll interview her, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. So that's how I it kind of sidetracked from my usual subjects, but you know, if there's an injustice, then, I mean, f from the highest level as well. I mean, that's what interests me, that, that the person who was committing that crime was a judge, and, or who was alleged to commit that crime. Let's be fair, he was alleged to commit that crime, but the police haven't investigated or interviewed any of the people she names. Mm. My brother's a police officer. I told him about this case, and he said, well, they should have interviewed those people involved who she has named as her abusers or people who were there. They haven't in interviewed them. This is the point. And I know that people like Ming Campbell, the politician, he's been given all this information. Uh, I could name other famous names, but they all say there's not enough evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, that's rubbish because the police haven't interviewed the people she has named, and that's what they should do. Mm -hmm. So people like Ming Campbell, they're spineless mm -hmm. because they won't get involved. Mm -hmm. And it annoys me mm -hmm. that, 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 you know, it's the fact that the person perpetrating the crime has power because he's a judge and he knows chiefs of police and he knows social workers, he can pull the strings and he's, he's basically immune to prosecution because he's a judge. Mm. And that's just really, it can't be right. No, no, it can't. We're supposed to live in a fair democratic society mm -hmm. and it clearly isn't. Um, what, what are your views generally on the media and, and what we're fed? Well, I mean, I've covered this a lot on my show, and I believe that the BBC is the biggest propaganda organisation in the world. I'll say that uh, quite openly. Um, they lie every day on their TV shows. They use a whole load of manipulative techniques in their production. Uh, one of them, I'll give you an example. I call it the um, the phony bone of contention, mm -hmm. or something's called it the phony bony. In <laughs> other words, in journalism, people think that one great thing in a TV show or on a radio show is to have two different opposing viewpoints and then people thrash it out in a debate and you come away from that debate and you think well I'm well informed because I've, I've, I've heard the debate mm -hmm. I know the debate, I've, I've got all opinions I can make my own mind up but what they do is they change 
the issue, so I'll give you an example, in Libya for example, the bone of contention on the shows that the BBC put out is whether we should arm the rebels in Libya to get rid of Gaddafi or whether we should send in our own troops and use airstrikes and they have two people arguing over that point. They don't have someone saying is it legal to even go into a sovereign nation so they change the, view, they change the argument which is based on the assumption that it's correct to go into Libya and they do this all the time on Question Time, on Newsnight and on, the BB on Radio 4. So, in my opinion, the BBC is, p is just a pure propaganda organisation. They're just trying to focus people's attention on one angle rather than the yeah, whole picture. Yeah, R run, run by the intelligence agencies. Mm. Yeah, yeah. What would you, um, going back to our sort of UFOs again, if somebody felt that they'd had um, an experience of a, of a UFO mm. abduction, for example, mm. or seen anything, what would you advise them to do? Well. Um, over the last year I've created a new facility on my website, it's just mm. it's an inquiry form basically mm. where people can submit their sighting or experience and when they do that they fill in all the fields, they give me all the information and it's, it's totally confidential. Mm. I send um, that to a guy called Dave Hodrian who is the chairman of Birmingham UFO Group and he goes through these reports very carefully mm. and he assesses them. A lot of them turn out to be Chinese lanterns mm. or something quite normal. Uh, the ones that don't or that he can't explain, he will then go and investigate them further. Quite often he'll contact the person, sometimes he'll even go and interview them and he knows a hypnotherapist and he, he has regressed a lot of people to mm. get memories mm. for, for people who have this alleged missing time. Mm. So richplanet.net, anyone can submit their experience of a UFO case or, or indeed an abduction case. Mm. Yeah. Um, we seem to hear a lot of this from the States, much more so than we do from the UK. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that might be? Well, um, I mean, I've had over 100 cases reported to me in the last year. Um, I mean, you, you could say that, uh, that if you go by certain uh, allegations or certain theories of for example, President Eisenhower was alleged to have met with a group of extraterrestrials in 1954 and there was a handover, handover of technology and America sanctioned the building of certain secret facilities to house extraterrestrials. Now, you can believe that or you can not believe it, but that's possibly why there's been more activity in the States mm -hmm. because in the 40s and 50s when there was some form of contact, th th that they, the, the government allowed them to be there. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one theory. Um, but it is a worldwide phenomenon. I mean, you've got cases in Argentina, mm. Argentina and Brazil and Russia, all over the world, in Iran, you know, mm. so it is not limited to the United no, States. No, um, And do you feel that there are the bases, the underground bases in the States where there are aliens? Um, well, if you believe, uh, I mean, we're relying purely on whistleblowers talking mm. to certain people who then report them in the media. W I would say the, the the main person to look at f in this would be Timothy Good. Mm. He has listed seven or eight locations where top generals have told him, or we don't know they were generals, but his connections mm. have told him that there are bases and, and they're, they're in places such as the South Pole, Australia, um, the Pacific Ocean, underneath the Pacific Ocean, uh, and uh, places like Puerto Rico, Costa Rico, uh, and various other places. On the, and, and they're this is what is alleged. Mm. Now, if we, go, if we then s go to the UFO phenomenon, they're not necessarily coming from space. They're mm. possibly coming from underneath the ocean. Mm. Okay. And another uh, guy who researched that was Tony Dodd, and he believed there was a, uh, an, an undersea base about 200 miles south of Iceland in the, Pacific o uh, sorry, in the Atlantic Ocean, uh, which was accounting for UFO cases in, in the UK. Mm. Um, so, I mean, it would be an ideal place to, uh, to hide a base. Yeah. How would any, you know, if, you, if five miles below the ocean, yeah. who's going to find it? Absolutely, yeah. Um, and there are many, many cases of witnesses who've seen discs coming out of the ocean. Mm. Military and civilian, uh, many people have witnessed uh, USOs, as they're called. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all fascinating stuff, yeah, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're doing a lecture tour at the moment, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're here in Western Supermare yep. today filming this. That's right. Uh, I'm doing uh, Leeds University, f I think that's from the 5th to the 7th of August. That's the Exopolitics Conference. And then I'm having a bit of a break. And then at the end of September, there's various other venues. So Middlesbrough, um, Barnsley, 
and some others to be arranged yeah and if people want to find out more about what you do you've got a newsletter on on your website which is www.richplanet.net mm -hmm. yeah so if they go on there I would advise them to click on uh, the Starship link because they can watch all of the uh, shows I've made over the last year uh, which are they're all hour-long shows free to watch online at Rich Planet Starship mm -hmm. so there's a lot of information in those shows and, and they're also available as DVDs they are if people yeah. want to buy them yeah, yeah. yeah but, but if they can watch them in their entirety you know there's not all the information is on my site yeah Excellent. richplanet.net great lovely thank you so much for joining us today it's been really really interesting um, you can have a look on the show notes there'll be all the links to Richard's site um, and you can go there and sign up to the newsletter, watch the DVDs. So, in light and energy from me, Claire Wiles, thank you for joining me today. Have a look at our show notes on www.thelightandenergychannel.tv. Thank you.